Hi guys, welcome to this session. I'm Rahul from Team Cloudy ML, and today we are going to discuss about comprehensions in Python. For example, list comprehension, dictionary comprehension, and set comprehension. So let's get started. So first, list comprehension, and this is the syntax. And why we use this? Because through comprehension, we can write code in just like one line. Normally, we use loops and then we write conditions and then we do something in it. It takes three to four lines of code sometimes. And uh, using comprehension, we can do that in just one line. Let me show you with an example. For example, this is the problem. Find the elements in a list in which elements are ended with the letter B. I'm going to copy this example. Before doing this problem with list comprehension, before doing this with list comprehension, I will show you traditional way how we do it. So the problem is, find the elements in a list. This is the list of strings. And I need to find elements which are ending with letter B. And here we can see that this is ending with B, this is ending with B, this is ending with B. There are five elements here which is ending with B. And out of those, out of those, I want only, only with having length greater than two. So what I will do normally, traditionally I will go for, for name and names. And then I will check if the name ends with <clears throat> if name ends with p this is the first condition and uh, length of name greater than 2 this is the condition i am keeping and then i will say print let's say right now i'm printing normally i don't need to i don't need to print here but normal, first, I'm showing you this with printing. These are the elements in this list having both these conditions where all three are ending with B and their length is greater than 2. But I don't want my output like this. I want this output in a list. So what I will do, I will say new names. I will define an empty list and then I will append it here. Instead of printing, I will say new names dot append name. And then I will have to print. I will have to print new names. See here how much, uh, how much I need to, how much I had to do it here. You can see one line, two line, three line, four line. Almost, almost I covered four lines and then a print statement. Actually five also because this list is also ha I'm having it. But the same thing, same thing I can do in just, let me show you. I will keep this as it is. And then I will say new names. new names see this this four line will be in only one line see how for name in names you can see here this first line of code and here i don't i don't need to use this colon i'm not going to use this colon and then i will copy this condition this i will copy this condition if name dot ends with and length this. So what I will do, I will just say name here. If this condition is true, I don't need to write this here, here. For name in names, if name dot ends with B and length is this, I want name here. And then I will simply print new names here. 
<coughs> let's see if this does the same job or not okay it is also giving me the same output so you can see these four lines of code become only in one line that's the beauty of list comprehension let's see this with one more example just remember the syntax if there is this if condition like this and you need to append something or something with just one condition you are going to answer so first write for and then use if condition and then whatever you want inside if condition will come here here you don't need to use dot append why because i have already defined this list square bracket so i don't need to append because i am already saving this here here i had to append because i had this empty list outside and then i had to append here i'm already inside why do i need to append so just remember this this is how it works let's see with one more example I had written this with comment to show you, but I did it anyway. So now next, given a list of numbers, I will show you this also again in, in a traditional way. Given a list of numbers, display the number in the form. Okay, I just need to display it using a string formatting here. Given a list of numbers, let me just take this nums here and display the number in the form of this respectively for odd and even numbers so what i need to do it here let's say odd even list first i'm going to define it empty so i'm going to do it first traditional way for a uh, num in nums so num in nums if num modulus because i need to get odd and even thing if num modulus 2 equal to 0 so i need to append dot append string of num this plus this equal because I want this format, okay? So, even. If this condition satisfy, my number is even. So, I will append it like this. Else, you will append the same, but you will write differently. Append string of num. And then you will just say here odd odd so this is what i am doing here according to what's given in the question and then i will simply print odd even list now let's print this and see so you can see that my output is this three is odd ten is even four is even five is odd seven is odd six is even everything is everything looks fine you can see my output here is similar, no difference. But you can see I had to write so much, but you know, it's readable actually. It's readable. Personally, I don't suggest you write everything in this comprehension because it's not readable. If you give your code to someone to go through it and if he doesn't know about comprehension, then they will having they will be having difficulty in reading the code. You want everyone to read your code easily. But it looks cool sometimes to use this. So you can do it. Now let's do the same thing in one line. Let's do the same thing in one line. So first for num in nums, I'm copying this, but you please write this. Last time we wrote if condition, last time we wrote if condition like this here, after for, because I had this only, if condition satisfy, I want name, else there was nothing. That's why. But this time, I am not going to do that. This time, I'm going to say, if num is zero, and again, remember, again, remember, I'm not going to append here. Why? Because I'm already in the square bracket. Here, I am outside of square bracket, so I had to open. So if this condition satisfy, I want this. I want this. So first I will say, 
So how do we write it here? For will be in the end. For num in nums. I want this if num modulus two equal equal to zero. Else. Else I want this. This is the condition here. This is how you will write. Previously we wrote if condition after for loop because I had only one condition inside if. This time I had multiple condition if and else. So I'm writing like this. I want this if con this condition satisfy. Else I want this for num in nums. Now let's run this and see output is still same. That's how it works. Very easy. But if you are feeling some difficulty, it's okay. Just Google more examples. And the main important thing while watching this or while reading code on Google, please, please, please write this and understand. If you have any problem, ask somebody you know. Ask somebody you know who can guide you through it. But Google is your best friend in this condition, trust me. Now let's go to dictionary comprehension. Concept is same. It just instead of square bracket, you will have curly bracket here. So let me show you. Create a dictionary having the word and its corresponding length for length greater than five. Else give the length as short. So you can see here when length is less than five, I'm just writing short. As I'm writing length. That's what I want. This is the output I want. So first I'm going to go traditional way as usual. This is my list of words. So what I am going to do, I'm just going to copy this so that I can show you how we can do it traditional way. I'm going to define here. I'm going to define here empty dictionary. Empty dictionary and I'm going to say for word a word in words. <clears throat> for each word, for each word, if length of word greater than five, if length of word greater than five, words dict, words dict, word equal to length of word, else words dict word equal to short okay this is the condition let's check print words dict so you can see my output is pretty similar so what i did here first i created empty dictionary and then i said for each word for each word in words, for each word in words, so it will loop over around six times. And then for each word, it will check whether the length of that word is greater than five or not. If it is greater than five, I will assign this word with its length inside this dictionary. If this condition does not satisfy, I said, then it's okay, assign this word with the string short. That's what I did. But you can see again, five, six lines of code, six lines of code. Whereas I can do this in one line. Let's see how. Now oh, I have created this empty dictionary and previously I wrote six lines of code. So now I'm going to do this in just one line. So I will say for word in words and then I will keep the condition. What I want is word with its length of word and when when this condition if length of word length of word satisfy greater than five else i want to assign it with short so in previously what i did i assigned with length but if length is greater than five or uh, else short that's what i said here else short so let's just see, you can see it's working as it is. That's the beauty of dictionary comprehension where it was six lines and now it's only one line.
let's go to one more problem of dictionary comprehension. So I have been given this dictionary and I want I want a new dictionary, but right now the price is in dollars and I want to convert it into convert it into euros or pounds. I want to convert it into pounds. So now I'm not going to show you in traditional way. Let's just do it in just one line. And since I have this dictionary, I will say for K comma V, which is key comma value in old price dot items. I'm going to loop our key and value similarly, but I want in the output is K key and I want to multiply right now it's in dollar form. So I, if I want to convert it into pounds, so dollar to pound is $1 is equal to 0 0.76 pound. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here V value multiplied dollar to pound. This is my output now because I want to convert it into pounds. So my output will be like this. 0 0.775 to 1.9, 1.9. Let me check if it's correct or not. You can see it's similar. It's very similar. I hope you got this. This is very easy. So that's how we do this with the dictionary comprehension. Let's see one example with set. So this is a very simple problem on set comprehension. Logic is same. Comprehension given a list including a lot of duplicate names. Okay, I have these the, this list having duplicate names, Sakshi cap with small letter with capital, Harsh with capital and small, okay. There are names with only single letter uh, with R and J with single letter. What we want is a list that consists of names that are longer than one letter. Means I don't want RJ. And have only the first letter capitalized, which is cap capital S with Simran, capital H with Harsh, it has capital S and H also. And Sakshi with S. That's what I want. I want Simran and Sakshi. So what I'm going to do is, it's very simple. We have done this before for name in names. I want if length of name is greater than one and name dot is title they consist of names that are longer than one letter and have only the first letter capitalized then I want those name here so this is the condition let's print it see we have Sakshi and similar so guys that's it that's how it works just remember if there's only one condition like if where, where there is no else then it comes after for. But if I need to add else condition also, then for will come first at the right corner and then if will come here. As we have seen earlier in previous problem, like here, for came in the end, first came condition for if and then else and then for. Just remember these things. That's it for this session on comprehensions in Python, list, set, dictionary. Thank you guys.